Hello, and a very warm welcome from the Royal Opera House, both to our audience here in the Limbury Theatre and, of course, to all of you watching around the world. I'm Ella Silly Woods, and I am thrilled to have you all here tonight for this insight supported by Rolex. This evening, we are lucky enough to be peeking into the preparation of the Royal Ballet's Swan Lake opening here at the Royal Opera House on March the 1st. After plans for its 2020 revival were slightly derailed by the pandemic, closing every theatre in the land. The late Liam Scarlett's sumptuous reimagining of Marius Patipa and Lev Ivanov's masterpiece brings together classic choreography, the glittering designs of John McFarlane and, of course, Tchaikovsky's incredible score. They all come together in an irresistible mix of passion and spectacle. Now, I know you're not here for me, so in a few moments we'll be jumping into some very spectacular rehearsals. So before we do, please welcome to the stage the Royal Ballet principal dancers Fumi Kaneko and Federico Bonelli, as well as a former principal, Zenaida Yanovsky. Thank you. <laughs> I have to say, I feel like that was slightly more applause than I got, but that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I mean, we've joked, haven't we, Zenaida, that we, we're all very excited to be here tonight, but it is genuinely so, so exciting. It's, you know, Swan Lake is a firm favourite with audiences and dancers alike, and it does cast an incredible spell. What is it that makes this work so magical? Well, I think it's the eternal love story that never gets consumed. I don't know if, you know, we can all relate somehow uh, to that story, but also... I think it's the fairy tale, the fact that um, uh, you can't quite grasp is not quite a real story, and yet we all relate as if it was a real story. And I think uh, maybe some connotations of the fact that um, it was the last piece that Tchaikovsky composed, and therefore I wonder if that lack of consumption in the love was his constant battle with his homosexuality, which he ended up um, you know, losing his life to. There is a real poignancy to it, isn't there? You can feel it when you watch it. You can feel that it, there's so many readings of it, so many ways that you can draw from it. And I think that you, you've absolutely captured the feeling that we all get when we watch Swan Lake. Yes. Now, Fumi, it has been a very long wait for your debut, hasn't it? So how does it feel to finally be taking on that dream dual role of Odette Odile? Yes, so um, I think... It was almost exactly two years ago. We had an inside evening <laughs> in Claw Studio <laughs> before my like um, debut, but we had a lockdown, so I didn't get to dance. So I'm really, really excited to debut this role. <laughs> As we said, lots of excitement tonight. We're all we've got. <laughs> yes. I mean, and the excitement doesn't end there, does it? Because Federico, you've had some very exciting news that you'll be taking over as artistic director at Northern Ballet, which, I mean, exciting for you, but devastating for us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity for me. I'm really looking forward to working with that amazing company. And I start in May at Northern Ballet as artistic director. And as I'm saying, I'm so thrilled and excited about this. And at the same time, how can it be possible to also be so profoundly sad of leaving this opera house, these dancers, this company, this audience, and everybody that has been my family for now 19 seasons, which is a bit scary to say. <laughs> so it's definitely the right time for me. It's a wonderful challenge and opportunity, and I look forward to, uh, to really contributing to the wonderful company that is Northern Ballet. And at the same time, I'm going to miss this family, this audience, this house. And the two sentiments really live in, in my heart at this, at this moment in time. So thank you very much for being here. This is, again, the last one for me. It's the last insight. And in a 
in a couple of weeks is going to be my last performance of uh, Swan Lake, uh, which was a long time coming with Fumi, as, as we, <laughs> we've heard. We started rehearsing a couple of years ago. We were meant to do one show together. Um, I think he's also one of the first, Swan Lake is one of the first uh, repertoire that I did as a student uh, when I was 17 and I went to the Prix de Lausanne and I danced the solo, pretty much the same solo that I do now. So it almost feels like a circle closing. And uh, although I'm absolutely ready to uh, stop dancing and to uh, tackle the challenge of uh, artistic leadership, I'm also certain that I will miss the stage and the relation with the audience. So lots of emotion tonight. Mm. Well, let's dive into the emotion. <laughs> let's see some dancing. I know that's what you're all here for. So, I mean, tell me about this. We're about to see the act do Padida with Prince Siegfried and Odette. So set the scene for us. OK, perfect. I'm going to get my little paper because I'm terrible <laughs> with names. But while they um, take their, you know, warm uh, things off, <laughs> you know, dancers, they will love warm things because obviously um, I'm terrible with names, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to read a few. But basically, uh, we all have to sort of go back to 1877 when this first Swan Lake was ever uh, performed. So before he was... Um, before it was a ballet, unlike Tchaikovsky always used to make ballets uh, with Ivanov and Petipa, and they were always doing it together. This time around, he wanted to do an opera called Undine, and uh, it kind of got sidetracked and ended up with this story, German story, Swan Lake. Um, he wrote it in a year, which was a record time for him. Uh, he was so, so excited. But uh, what we are going to see now is the Act II Pas de Deux was actually the last, um, uh, the last bit of love in Undine, and he reused it to create the love Pas de Deux between the white swan and the prince. So the prince comes, you know, he, his mother says, darling, it's time to get married. You're getting a little bit old. <laughs> And, you know, you haven't chosen a princess and so on, so on. So how about you think about it? And he's kind of against it. Again, we, you know, probably, it, again, those connotations that highlights about, uh, you know, um, Tchaikovsky not quite, you know, um, not quite wanting to, just wanting to be himself and not just getting married to, you know, a woman for the sake of, Maybe that's it, maybe not one can just be, you know, a little bit free in that thought. But um, basically the prince is not quite happy with the idea of marriage. And uh, he goes and goes hunting. And while he's hunting, um, there's a flock of swans which he pursues and realizes that those swans, especially one of them, uh, turns into some kind of woman and it's dark at night. And, and the story says that you know, the, uh, uh, well, in this, in this story, it's a little bit different, but uh, in the original story is uh, the mother, her, her stepmother, that turns her into a swan to, uh, to uh, sort of take her away from society, in a way. So it means that at night, she becomes a princess, well, a, a, a woman, and that's when Siegfried uh, meets her. So it's, it's a very um, odd situation because one has to play it like a woman, but also like a little bit of a swan. So not everything can be a swan, but, but uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a fine line. And I think that's when um, dance is at its best, when uh, language is not quite set and, and yet uh, imagination is free. So this is the bit that we are going to see. <laughs> you set the scene so beautifully. I'm, so <laughs> I'm lucky now because I get to creep off into the wings and just watch. So we'll get started. Perfect. And of course, please welcome Michael Panthers to the piano. Who yes. I think will be arriving. I'm gesturing at an empty piano, but he will be there to play. Yes. So I'll let you get yes. started. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. So of course, the, the, we have to understand that the score that was initially um, 
uh, produced in 1975 uh, for the opening night of uh, Swan Lake. The, it was in two acts, first of all. It was in 1977, and it was Julius Reinsinger, sorry about that, um, Reinsinger, who choreographed it, and it was a complete flop. It just didn't work somehow. It just never took off. Um, and this, this pas de deux was, again, it was, it was, I think it's the only remaining thing in the second act that has remained the same. So the version that we know, the Swan Lake that we know right now, is not the original score of Swan Lake. It's not the way it's done. So what happened is that uh, Tchaikovsky died in, I think, 93? Uh, 1893, and in 1895, Petipa and uh, Ivanov took the score apart and rebuilt it to create what they thought was the perfect Swan Lake. So it's very, very interesting if you ever get to hear the, the original score as Tchaikovsky wanted it, uh, because it's all in a different, uh, slightly different things that you immediately go, oh yeah, that's Act 3. Well, it's not, it was act one and, and so on. So this has remained exactly the same. So that, that is just the same. So I guess I'm gonna welcome the dancers because otherwise you're going to get bored of me talking. <laughs> so Fumi, Fede, if you, if you want to come in, thank you. Um, so we are going to take the entrance, shall we take it from the Padre from the beginning of the Padre with you entering? So you are entering the forest, so I'll set the mood a little bit. So uh, Siegfried enters the forest. He's just seen, he's met the swan, but she's kind of fly, she, she's flown away. And so he re-enters in a sort of thoughtful manner and she reappears to create this love, love padada. So they are um, super ready <laughs> to perform. <laughs> uh, we had a rehearsal you know, obviously we've been rehearsing uh, weeks and uh, for weeks and, and they are super, super ready. So I, I don't think I need to stop that much unless things happen and unless, you know, we need to just explain why I want certain things a certain way. But otherwise, I think I'll let you just fly away and take the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.
Right, you understand why I couldn't stop, right? <laughs> it's pretty perfection. So um, just a few pointers, just a few pointers, okay? When, um, when you walk in, and this is, I've told Fumi this before, but I think just for you to understand how coaching works also. So uh, it, a lot of it is with imagery. So as you walk in, remember you are, you are walking in from a flight. So really get yourself in a position that you have to just lead with your chest a little bit more. Um, but we talked about that. Well, great, great. Um, yeah, exactly. I loved your breaths. Very nice breaths as you come in. That was great. Um, you can see, I think the difference, I've asked Fumi all the time to finish her movement with her head uh, because I think is, um, as dancers, uh, we are a little bit like magicians, right? So although you have full, um, um, you think you know what you're looking at, you know, <laughs> we are managing your eyes, it's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, the reason why, is because I want you to uh, make sure, I, I want to make sure that the audience sees the head as the last thing, because that head is going to signify to me the swan-like. Uh, so it's very different if you do something together at the same time, uh, because then the eye can take everything together. Then if you do, then everybody sees the little pinky, right? So. That's, that's what I'm asking for me. So as she's going to arabesque, can you leave your head, especially in here, can you leave that one the last, last minute, is last that, minute. Is the this is, bef uh, no, after the poncho, before she goes da, di, di, da, da, yeah. So it's uh, just after. So really manage to get into that position, da, 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 poncho, exactly. Into arabesque, lift, and now, that's it, exactly. Because that, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. But little things like that are, are so difficult because then you, you notice, you, it makes you go, oh, that, that was quite a lovely movement. And it just takes to separate um, everything, to, you know, to, to, to make it independent. Um, that was beautiful, beautiful. Um, the pulls away, gorgeous. Uh, as you walk away, the, this was very, very nice. You are, the, the reason why you walk away from him is because probably you're shy, but also you're a little bit afraid. Can I see that in, in your body language? That uh, afraid, not afraid, but afraid. Uh, you know he's a nice person, but you know you shouldn't be doing that. So just is, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wonder, Fede, I wonder if you could give her a little bit more time for her to acknowledge that sense of, oh, I'm really before. comfortable, yeah, before she goes, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Okay. Yeah. I think that's lovely. Exactly. That, that's a good timing, yeah. Very silent. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we do it with the music? I think that'll be better, you're right. But, but is the, yeah, you're so that, right. That, that is, yeah. is driving the action there. I think okay. so, I think so. Okay. So it, then you have to tell her you love her, otherwise she'll, she'll, she, she might fly away again. Um, and I wonder, for me, when he's saying, I, I love you, if that is the thing that makes you go, I can't be here. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be seen. I, I just need to go. And then he stops you for the diam, diam. Do you want to have a look at this with the music and see how that sits? Uh, Michael, do you know where we are, right? I know. Michael is genius. He 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 reads everybody's mind. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.
perfect timing. Oh, that was nice, right? Is, I think that's perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. Because then he reads really well. Do you, do you feel? I have a question. Yeah. But it's, it's about the end. Maybe yeah. I should just wait. <laughs> okay. No, I think, I think that's it. Okay, let's go. Let's keep going. Um, this was great. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be really uh, chest first when you run. So as you're as you going to suit on you, yeah. And now you're going to leave your arms behind and then go push, 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 push. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then Fumi, you can recover. It's, it's just that I want that feeling of your heart like a teen, like a teenager. Your heart before your brain, <laughs> basically. Just like, oh. and then you can recover while you run. You know, you don't have to stay back if you don't want to. Because uh, it's quite difficult to run, yeah. Mm -hmm. But but that we feel that your heart is more powerful, that you have to do it, yeah, yeah. Uh, this was very nice. Um, I want a picture uh, for a second of here before you start the the hops. Uh -huh. Just a picture. Do I need to get to there? Maybe a little sooner if you feel that that was a, a short, yeah. yeah. Really, so maybe, I can just... maybe, maybe exactly. Give us a second as you go on and want to, yeah. It's only so we can also, because there's been so much movement, we need a, a second of, you know, uh, for the audience also. Um, do you want to, do you want to try that from before she goes into the, the thing? Thank you. And. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Excellent. Yes, super. The lifts were gorgeous, very, very nice. Uh, coming across, very good. The end, question, yes. It was about the, the, the pirouette. Also you said and everybody is. It's about oh. the, <laughs> the pirouette after we do the, yeah. the Fumi does the battue. Mm -hmm. When we do two, do we, can we try a bit slower, do you think? Yeah. Because I, I really break yeah. Yeah. to do the end. Yeah. It's, I don't know, can we try it once? Yeah. yeah. The double is the, the double that gets a little bit too fast. Michael, I wonder if you could take it down a notch. Just mm. it's yeah. Yeah. But a dajo pirouette instead of tuk tuk. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Because when, when, we, when we do this slow, then we are out of time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like. Yeah. The, yeah, the interesting bit also make sure that we understand what you're trying to say. and the end it really is like you are giving up a little bit and he's going okay okay you you know so your look away as this is the breath right it's like a side and then as you as you lean your head away from him because you are kind of giving up a little bit on your own or what you should do 
and the leg is batu because that's that's your heartbeat going ta -ta 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 -ta. yeah as you pass it really make sure that we understand why you do everything you know that heaviness of yeah what's happening in your head has to show in every bit of every limb okay, let's try shall we do it with the music yeah. again okay give up at the end. Yes. Nice, very nice. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Well, Fumi Federica, I'll let you catch your breath because you're going to be back shortly, aren't you? So uh, feel free to, to walk off the stage. I have to say, I've never felt more like I'm lumbering onto a stage after that. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult to walk on after you've seen that. <laughs> Obviously, we'll stay and have a little bit of a chat because it must feel so strange for you to be here when two years ago you were in an insight coaching Fumi for this very role. So how does it feel to be back working with her again? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it seems like two years have gone by in some ways very slow, in some ways extremely fast. It's like we're back again two years later. And um, yes, it was Fumi's premiere and she was, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you, she was a principal yet or she was about to or she was just a principal. So again, very, um, uh, yeah, um, not, I don't, I'm not at all inexperienced, but I think she was tackling a major role um, as a youngster, and so uh, now she's uh, uh, two years on. She's a very different uh, kind of dancer. She's much more, you know, experienced in so many other ways. Um, so what I see now that I, you know, uh, compared to two years ago, is extraordinary. I, I see someone that is so uh, finished. And, and beautiful and that has so and so eloquent with her dancing. Um, I hardly have to say anything because a lot, most of it comes from her and her experiences and her wanting to, to say, you know, to the audience how she feels and, and tell the story her way, which is the beauty of, 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 of dancing. Yeah. I mean, she's absolutely incredible to watch. I was, you know, backstage, they were like, go on, you need to, <laughs> you need to get back out there. But I, you know, you could watch yeah. her for hours and I can't wait for audiences mm. to see her, to witness her in this role. Yeah. How does it feel to finally unleash this to the world? Because obviously, mm. you know, audiences have been patient, but dancers have been patient. As you said, they've been waiting to debut in these incredible life-changing roles. Absolutely. And dancers have been so resilient throughout these two years. I think everybody can, uh, well, everybody saw the YouTubes and, you know, the amount of uh, media that they kept posting saying, you know, this will not break us, this will, you know, uh, we will be dancers after COVID no matter what. Incredible resilience. And especially when it comes to this level, uh, you know, they, they are, uh, um, athletes of very, very high demand, uh, Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. And so to stop them completely for two years, uh, you know, uh, you have to really, yeah, to maintain that sort of level. Sorry, I, I couldn't speak properly, but is that to maintain that sort of level of quality of dancing and not only just the dancing, the creativity and the physicality of both. And it, it's, a, it's a very um, strenuous time. I, I, myself uh, was part of these um, uh, Zoom classes that we gave for free to all the dancers that were around the world uh, not uh, being able to, to train. And I saw most of these dancers in kitchen tables, in, you know, hanging from beds, you know, babies, <laughs> everything, you name it, cats, dogs, everything. And they were there just every morning just doing their class. So um, I, I've got nothing but admir admiration for, for, you know, such, yeah, 
just such joy. <laughs> yeah. But certainly, Fumi's, Fumi's, she's beautiful, isn't she? <laughs> I mean, I've we got no other words. Yeah. Just, you know, I, 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 I might be her coach, but, but uh, her artistry goes beyond any words that I can say. Well, you know, then let's, let's take a look again. We're going to move on to Act Absolutely. 3 now, aren't we? So this is a very different feel, a very different mood. So again, set the scene for us here. Perfect. So I can't remember the name, so I'm going to go back to my notes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see why, because I'll make a mistake anyways. But um, uh, the, so Act 3, Act 3 is a very interesting one, because the Act 3 that we know now and that we are going to hear and see today, again, was done after Tchaikovsky was um, passed away. And so the, um, the interesting bit is that when it was first done, when Swan Lake was first done in two acts, these didn't exist at all. Uh, there wasn't a pas, de uh, a pas de deux, there was a pas de six. But the main dancer, the, ma the main Odette Odile thought, oh, I'm not having this. <laughs> Um, I want a pas de deux, and I want a solo, and I want a coda, because I am very famous. Her name being Anna Sh Sobeschaskaya. So off she went to Petipa and said, well, would you uh, choreograph something? You know, I want a pas de deux, a solo, and a coda. Would you choreograph that for me? So Petipa said, well, we don't have the music. And he said, oh, don't worry, ask one of your friends. So they went and asked Minkus, as you do. <laughs> if he would compose something for this prima ballerina. And later on, I realized that uh, there was something, I think in the opera, they used to do that, and they were called suitcases arias, and, uh, which uh, meant that you could be doing anything, uh, any opera you want, and suddenly, in the middle of the opera, off you went, and that was your famous aria. And so Mozart and all these other you know, famous composers will compose an aria for a specific person. And it didn't matter where you were in the opera, you will belt up this <laughs> aria. And they were, I think, notorious for being suitcases arias. So the, in, I didn't realize that in the dance world, this existed too. And so she said, I want this, and can you create it for me? And so Tchaikovsky heard that this was happening, that Minkus was uh, you know, composing something for his you know, untouchable Swan Lake. And he got into a grump and said, no, 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 okay, I'll do this, and I'll, I'll create a music for this part of the, for Act 3. Now, this is not the music that he composed either <laughs> for Act 3. So this, this piece of music was actually in Act 1, and it was a celebration of his coming to age. So that's why when it starts, we will hear Michael going dun, 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 and this was glasses up, he's 18. So that was, that was why. Later on, it became the main uh, patterner for Act 3. But what we know now as in, in the ballet world, what we know now as the Tchaikovsky patterner, which Balanchine recreated into a, an, a completely different independent thing, is the music that was created for this Act 3. And the reason why, and it's lovely, because uh, musically also, uh, it, Tchaikovsky Pada de starts with a very thin tune, and it's a walk in the, in the, in the forest, a walk in the park, you know? And he goes, da da dee da dee da dee da you know? And he just responds to that, and she goes in, and, he, and the musically, that's, that's exactly what happens in Tchaikovsky Padada. She, she goes, he answers, she goes, she answers, uh, he answers, and it's so constantly like that. So this is a completely different take to what Tchaikovsky actually put together. Uh, I'm very excited. I so think. that's, <laughs> but now this is exactly what we know, and this is mm. what everybody does, and so it's become the Act 3 Padada. So Fantastic. there well, we are. I cannot wait. A very different feel. I'll hand things over to you. Zanaga. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to call everybody back. Um, of course, this was done without Tchaikovsky's um, seal of consent, because by then uh, he wasn't able to say it. But this is it. <laughs> OK, any time you want. <laughs> Right, so again, stop when you guys need to stop, 
Otherwise, if I see something that goes horribly wrong, which I doubt, I'll stop, OK? All right. Thank you. Okay, we are going to stop there, just so you can catch your breath. <laughs> okay, just so you can catch your breath also. But uh, I, I, I apologise because I didn't set the scene. So all this happens in the palace. These uh, princesses came to greet uh, uh, the prince. The mother is going, you need to marry one of them. I don't care who, one of them. And suddenly, uh, Odile comes in and she's you know, pretending to be Odette, but not quite. That's the, the mysterious. She's a princess here, and she's just the princess of one kingdom that nobody ever heard. And she's extremely sed uh, seductive, as we can tell. And <laughs> so there's always, and so of course, the prince is completely mesmerized by, by her. Okay, um, very nice, yeah. Her attitude. Yes, like it didn't go round as good. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. And so I, I think also, I wonder if you should uh, make yourself into that position, because it's such a, um, think it more as a grand, you know, a grand position, you know, as if you are taking the power. Exactly. Also, uh, at this point, uh, Rothbard, which is the buddy, the sorcerer, uh, is here also. So every time she's talking, she, Rothbard is just making sure that she knows what comes next. And so then, you know, and she's constantly uh, reassured by him, also talking to him constantly saying, am I doing well? Am I doing well? Am I doing the right thing, sir? You know, so it's all happening. And, and everybody's kind of involved in this weird, um, uh, yeah, mood that she's created. Uh, okay. Do you want to do it from here? I think that would be nice. Yeah. 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 So make sure that after the third one, because it's the hardest one, I think after the third one is always somehow the hardest, uh, make sure that you plie nicely into that arabesque so it doesn't happen quite, you know, so you are nice and controlled, then you turn and then you go, no. Yeah. I think I need to put it down better. Okay. So she can do that, but it's all right. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> can you ask me a little bit more? more. And then I think it was, the third one was maybe not enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. Can we have eight? Yeah. Yes, that's it.
Good, 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 good. We, we talked about the musicality there. I was happy about that. The pure didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, do you know, I wonder if instead of whacking that uh, ponche, okay. if you should stretch it. Okay. So as you go promenade, 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 stretch one duck instead of whack, bam, bam. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Yeah. And I think that will help you because you, you'll be on your supporting leg a little bit and so it meant that by the time you get to that passe, you'll be right on your supporting leg. Uh, while the other one, you're out and the back in. Yeah. Do you want to try uh, maybe from the... Yeah, perfect. Yes. That, that feels right. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just stretch like that, yeah. Fantastic. Beautiful. And take your time. I think da di da di um, bam, bam. It's your only time with the audience. So, chum. And then as you're looking at them, you are manipulating what's going to happen. Dun, di, da, di, da, you know? So they are, they are with you all the time. They're actually, in a sick way, liking you. <laughs> you know, so whatever you're doing, manipulating everybody going da 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 da, da. it's a, like the Don Giovanni story, you know, we hate him but we like him. <laughs> okay, super, beautiful, beautiful. Was I too far for the, uh, when I'm on the knee and you do the punch it? Uh, I was late. Late, so okay. Usually I'm a bit stiff, but... Okay. Mm. So the 
distance was away. Okay, fine. Super. Do you want to do a solo? Yeah, let's. let's Shall we just? Solo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Did you go over like a really? Oh, it is good. Isn't I it? wonder if it's because of the space also. You're, so you're stepping in a little it's bit. Because, yeah. No, yeah. beautiful. Please, please. No, I saw the period not happening when you yeah. took a la second because your, yeah, yeah. your weight was, yeah. was there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, make sure that you are right on your supporting, like which you know. Yeah. Ooh, if I catch my breath. I <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Because I, I think, yeah. Yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Something to work on. Yeah. I can see it because you put too much weight yeah. on the other, on, on the. Yeah. I really, when I'm falling, I'm not well. Yes, that's it. Like. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah. It's, it's such a tricky because one, one millisecond will, you know, will just put you off. And it's, it's a lot harder because normally with adrenaline also you are able to put yourself back on. But yes, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I said Olympic athletes, I meant it. <laughs> yeah. Do you like the, this part there? Yes, the I do, I do. Does it work? Yeah, I do. It's nice and light before you go into that. I think so, I think it's lovely. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Seth. Super. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Fumi, how do you feel about your solo? Will you? Yeah. Okay. You you don't have to. You just you can say no. Fumi is gorgeous because she never says no. <laughs> we have to force her to say no. <laughs> Are you okay with this? Okay.
put on the music. Do you want to pick up from the second one? Let's pick up. It's the, the spacing is very different, of course, and uh, which creates. Uh, we are going to pick up from the second. Bum, 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 bum. So yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Quite hard to correct. <laughs> uh, I think um, the way um, you could do that pedivore is, is this arm. What's happening is that this arm is coming, da, yeah, and it's a la second. And then you have to bring it forward. And I think you could cut, you could cut corners by just going, da, yum, and so it's already there. Yeah. So I think you wouldn't have to. Try, try just once. And yes, and one, one, one. That's it. That's it. Do you find it hard that you are not taking it forward, no, or? I think I do that sometimes, and yes. then I do this. <laughs> but just yeah, I think that will be nicer because it's just straight boom, and then you, it means you can actually bring it a la second and start. Yeah. Beautiful triples, beautiful. Yeah, I love it. The second time you sat here a little bit longer and I really like it. I know it's hard because you're coming down and if you're not quite on your leg, you have to just go otherwise. But uh, aim to really come down and really sit on that one. Yeah. Da, da, and. Yes. Well, that's a lovely one. <laughs> that's a keeper. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Like, that's really nice. Sit on the music as much as you can, especially because then, yeah, you can talk about that. Excellent. Are you up for a coda or call it a... No, I think we don't have any time, I think. I think that's it. <laughs> I'm going to get booed by the end I of was this. told when she comes in, she's your cutest stuff. Okay. Believe me, I don't want to do it any more than you do. Right, I'm going to hand these convenient mics yes. over here. I'm going to give you each a mic. Sorry, because I realise you're probably very out of breath, so I'll spill. I'll have lift a little us. bit. Yes, if we can get back to our spot. I mean, that was absolutely Actually, I'm going to stop binding. with you guys, because I think these questions are now for you. But anyways, I think... Uh, thank you very much, because they've been amazing. <laughs> yeah.
Well, I have to say, one of the things, and I realise it sounds obvious, but these insights, I love the additional context we get. It's so interesting to hear, you know, everything that you said this evening and then watch it in the performance, see it translated to the work that you're doing. And Fumi, I wanted to start with you because as we just saw, this is a very complex role, not just technically as we witnessed, but of course, psychologically, it's a dual role. There are these two contrasting roles. So how have you found that? Has it been challenging? So, um, yes, definitely. <laughs> also, I haven't done it full length uh, going through. So on stage, I, I'm sure I will feel different every time. But even just in rehearsals, switching the role in short time, I have to yeah, think not just physically what I'm doing, but also the mentally mm. is challenging, but really, really uh, interesting and demanding. Right? Yes, if I can add this, because we have been practicing the steps and the coordination almost, of course, we, we also, we're very mindful of interpretation. What we haven't done is done from beginning to end. And uh, that obviously is what, what, the proof of the pudding really, is when you go through the whole thing <laughs> and, you, and, and there is an arc to the story. So I think that's our uh, task really in the next, uh, few days before we go on stage and for rehearsals and then perform. But also, you help me, you help me as well. Even just one pirouette turn is so different to Odette and Odile. And yeah, it's very... Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of ballet and dance, right? And with physicality, we can tell a character. So because obviously we don't, we don't talk usually. And so really with the movement and the physicality, <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing we don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I mean? And that's also the, it's been actors without words. That, that is what is so wonderful. I be, that's what I enjoy dancing and actually watching as a spectator. Federico, that's, yes. oh. <laughs> go on, go for it. Quick round of applause. <laughs> Well, that's actually what I wanted to ask you about, because I think it's fair to say you are famed in particular for your storytelling skills, for the story you convey to an audience. We've seen that this season with Romeo, Albrecht. So what, are you, what story are you telling in this role? What is Prince Siegfried, you know, at his heart? So what, what I wanted to say is that, so I didn't always know that ballet could actually tell stories. When I fell in love as a kid, as a student, he was with movement and music. And that on its own is it's a wonderful thing. I, I think we all agree. When then we can start telling story, it opens up a new world. And, and this is really the characteristic of uh, English ballet in general, I think, well, British ballet, really. And uh, so Siegfried is, uh, in this version especially, well, in most version anyway, uh, his dad just passed away. And um, he is coming of age, and uh, his mother, the queen, is telling him that he needs to settle down, he needs to choose a a wife, and then take on the uh, responsibility of being the king. And uh, Siegfried is, is not really ready. So there is this beautiful solo at the end of Act One, which is the weight of responsibility. And he doesn't, he doesn't really want it. And so he goes, and the, the crossbow then was his uh, birthday present from his mother, comes to represent the weight of responsibility and of the kingdom. And so it's beautiful. He looks at the crossbow and says, being a king is what, um, you know, is waiting for me. And he says, no, I don't want that. And to add the complexity, there is Rothbard, or actually, I don't know how he's called in the first act, he's, maybe he has a different name, but he's the same mm -hmm. character that then becomes Rothbard, who is there, who actually wants to usurp. Is, is that how you say it in English? He yeah, wants you to steal the, yeah. And so he's really interested in the fact that the, the pr Prince Siegfried is not really up to, to doing his duty as a, as a future king. So there is all this interesting bit in the first act. And then, of course, uh, Fumi and uh, Odette is the idealized woman and is this thing of beauty. And, um, you know, although you could say agency sometimes, we could discuss the agency of, of Odette. But actually, I think she does show at times during the pas de deux that, you know, she's choosing. She, at first, she doesn't really. Yeah. No, and she's uh, afraid probably and maybe going away from Siegfried, but then she decides yeah. to give in to, into that. Yeah. So, and, and then, yeah, third act and fourth act, the tragedy at the end. And mm -hmm. <laughs> come and see the show, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>
very well trained, not just in the dance. <laughs> you know how to set the scene. Well, thank you so much. I am very sad to say that that is all that we have time for. Don't forget, you can visit the Royal Opera House website to get more information about these upcoming performances, which are due to open here in the Royal Opera House in just a few weeks. But for now, all that's left to do is say a huge thank you to our wonderful guests. So we had Michael on piano. Again, I'm gesturing to an empty piano, yes. but <laughs> wonderful to hear this. We also had... Sorry, I'm going I'm to cut into the applause because I feel like there's going to be a lot of it. The wonderful Zenaida. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, our fantastic principals, Fumi and Federico. I'm not going to be jealous for the applause again. It's a very big round of applause. But as I said, that is all that we have time for. I hope that you've enjoyed tonight's insight supported by Rolex. And fingers crossed, we'll be seeing you all back here very soon in Covent Garden. Good evening. Thank you.